And just like that, the Longhorns land another commitment to Kendrick Blackshire, uh, formerly of Alabama, but went to high school at Duncanville High School. I uh, played for Reggie Samples up there. Uh, CJ, I, I tell you what, the, the Longhorns are hot in the portal. Uh, they're hot just about everywhere on the uh, uh, recruiting circuit right now. Uh, but this makes six, six uh, transfer portals, three on offense, now three on defense. Uh, Blackshire, a linebacker out of Alabama, commits to the Longhorns. What role do you think he feel, fills for this Longhorn team? Yeah, he certainly is going to add a piece of that linebacking room. He's going to be a great addition, great depth for that linebacking room. I see him as a, a downhill, run-fitting, uh, big-bodied linebacker that you can throw into uh, heavy set jumbo formations or anything close to the goal line and be confident that he's going to be there to fit a hole uh, or simply you know, plug what should be, you know, a, a pretty tough running attack from teams in the SEC that Texas will face this season. I really like the addition in terms of depth and the experience on the linebacking spot. We talk about replacing a Jalen Ford and how impactful he's been over the years uh, for Texas in the middle of that defense. I'm not necessarily going to say that Kendrick Blackshear is going to step in and be a guy that plays you know, 85, 90% of the snaps that we expected to see from Jalen Ford on a week to week basis. But this is a guy who can come in and play 15 to 20 downs uh, on, you know, heavy set run formations, uh, run expected downs, everything along the lines of that. I, I see him as a guy who backs up David Benda and provides nice quality depth. Also played a, by the way, I, this is fair, also played a lot on special teams for Alabama, had three tackles against Texas uh, in the matchup this year as well. Uh, I agree. Uh, he is a, a guy that is a downhill uh, run stopper. Uh, that's something that you're going to need. Uh, we talk about it in the SEC and how the offensive fit changes what you need on defense. Uh, it, it also tells me a little bit about what Texas is trying to do right now in the portal. It's very, very clear. They want proven talent. Um, and they need – I mean, look – Leonga Lafau, I think, is going to end up being a really good player for the University of Texas. He may not be ready for prime time in the SEC next year. He probably still needs some seasoning to him. Uh, by bringing in Blackshire, uh, you give Lafau a little bit more time to to uh, uh, to uh, you know assimilate. You give David, you got David Benda back. Texas did lose Jet Bush. That was a question mark whether or not he was going to stay or go. Uh, he's decided to go on and go. Uh, so you look at it that way, in, in my opinion, CJ, and uh, this was a, a interesting take uh, for Texas because it wasn't an obvious one, right? They they clearly said, okay, we need somebody to bridge the gap, and they went out and fi found someone, again, a strategic take from the University of Texas. Yeah, I, I certainly wanted to echo what you mentioned there in terms of a strategic take. You know, we talk about the other positions. Texas loses six defensive backs to the portal. Well, they go out and get Andrew Makuba. Texas needs more edge rushing. They go get Trey Moore. Obviously, wide receiver is another conversation. They lose just about everybody that caught a pass last year with the exception of Jonte Cook. They go out and add three guys with experience and a lot of production. That makes sense. This linebacker addition is one that, you know, was a little bit, maybe not as necessary of a take, but one that will certainly reap the benefits this fall when you start getting into the nitty gritty of a week seven, week eight, and injuries start piling up. Having another able body like Kendrick, Black Kendrick Blackshear will go a long way for this Texas defense. And I also wanted to mention, we talked about Jet Bush very briefly there. We talked about it right before we started filming. Maybe this was, you know, a, a piece that Texas took as a result of Jet Bush leaving. I actually kind of wanted to backtrack on that. Jet Bush more so as a Sam outside linebacker. I was looking it up previously. Kendrick Blackshear, 102 snaps on defense this past uh, season for Alabama. 98 of them came inside the box. So he's not a guy that you saw kind of sprinkled outside wide. He didn't rush the passer all too much off the edge, as we've seen Texas use Anthony Hill or someone along the lines of that. So I wouldn't necessarily say – uh, that Jet Bush had anything to do with this addition. I think Texas was looking to add a linebacker piece for, for pure depth reasons, uh, you know, as we moved into the 2024 offseason. Uh, again, as we talked about it, a, a strong piece, one that has experience and is certainly able-bodied to play downs if needed. Well, if you look at it from a, a depth chart perspective, I mean, nobody actually has started a full year at linebacker for Texas of the ones returning. Anthony Hill, while uh, just named a freshman All-American, uh, this week uh, by the, the uh, Football Writers Association, uh, David Benda, Mo Blackwell. None of those guys have started a full year. Neither has Kendrick Blackshear. But the point being, 
uh, that older, more experienced group might be what Texas is looking for as they bring along the under the younger guys, like Leon LaFau, Darian Gallette, Samaj A. Burrell, et cetera. Uh, certainly an interesting group. And he's not going to take the snaps away from a Mo Blackwell. Mo Blackwell's more that, you know, he's an he's a space guy, right? Yeah. Kendrick Black Sugar is a box guy to your to your uh, comment. Uh, all right, look, Texas is not done in the portal, we don't think at all. Uh, they still need a tight end. We know that. Uh, they, you, We know they need another defensive lineman, at least one at this point. Um, could they even go after a punter down the road? Uh, with Michael Kearns only being a true freshman, we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. Uh, but uh, look, the Longhorns having to go with Blackshirt, uh, having, having to look at all of these uh, opportunities right now for the Longhorns, uh, just a big time pickup for Texas uh, in this regard. I, I look at the the overall uh, totality of the portal, though, CJ, uh, and I'm I'm struck by the fact that uh, Texas has three wide receivers uh, in this group: uh, Matthew Golden, si Silas Bolden, uh, and then obviously uh, uh, Isaiah Bond. Did they go one more than you expected them to go in this grouping? I think so. Uh, I thought that Texas was really excited, at least from the folks that I was talking to behind the scenes, about what they wanted uh, to see from John T. Cook or DeAndre Moore. Obviously, Ryan Wingo and Parker Livingston are two other guys uh, from true freshmen the class that were coming in that had a lot of high hopes to get on the field. We've talked about Sarkeesian having a tight-knit kind of circle when it comes to uh, getting guys on the field at a wide receiver position that you, know, you want to trust, that you want to be able to uh, throw out to any situation. So I understand the addition. It was a bit concerning because like you said, it does crowd it. You know, the, the room is crowded and there's no hiding it now with these new bodies on campus. It certainly is something that is worth monitoring in terms of the development of the young guys, but Hey, it's a, it's a sink or swim world. You know, yeah. if you want to get on the field, you better be able to produce and develop off the field in spring football, winter conditioning, and take that over to the, to the fall. And that has to be the case for these younger guys. Well, Bolden, Bolden is is uh, supposed to be. Uh, let's not forget he's a grad transfer. Uh, Bond is expected to be a one year rental. I mean, he's supposed yeah. to be going to the NFL. Golden is the only one of that group that may be there more than one year. So the young receivers have to look at it a little bit. Like, hey, these these guys are on the come. Uh, but two commitments in one day from the Longhorns for the portal, uh, bringing the total now to six. Three on offense, those three receivers. Three on de defense. Uh, we mentioned Kendrick Blackshire, obviously talking about him right now. Uh, Trey Moore out of UTSA and Andrew Makuba, uh, the uh, safety nickel out of Clemson. All three guys, all all six guys with a lot of snaps, with a lot of maturity uh, as Texas. I mean, I read one thing where Texas could have as many as six first or second round draft picks in this upcoming NFL draft. That's just crazy to me. Uh, they're going to try to find guys that can help them immediately bridge that gap. Uh, year over year. All right, congrats to Kendrick Blackshire. Uh, another pickup. We didn't talk about the Duncanville connection and the importance of that, uh, but clearly that's something that Texas wants to continue to, uh, a pipeline Texas wants to continue to tap into, not only with Co Colin Simmons uh, this past year, but Cam Williams the year before that. Uh, so all of this in that South Dallas area, very, very important to the Longhorns. All right, for CJ Vogel, I'm Bobby Burton and Kendrick Blackshire. Hook them. <laughs>